as they sneak up through the grass from a little old sod shanty on my claim. <laughs> no more sod shanties for us, eh, Rose? No more howling wind. A nice house by a spring. Quiet hearth. Farm will maybe even give up a crop or two. Would you like that, Bessie? Of course I will. <laughs> Speaking of crops, we're going to take it. It's for you. How was it? Of course. You're growing plenty more just like it deserves. A new beginning. I remember the way my restless father's eyes would shine when he spoke those words. I have sought out a life of new beginnings as well. Подождите! Здравствуйте! Стойте! Подождите! Stop right there! Please! Who are you? I'm Mikhail. I'm pilgrim like you. I'm not harming you. See? What do you want then? What do I want? I won't talk. Come. Come with me, Mr. and Mrs. and beautiful little girl. We will talk and eat. Come on. But that summer when we set out from Dakota, I was not yet a writer. I was like anyone else forced to move on by hard times. My heart breaking for the loved ones I was leaving behind my hopes swelling for what there might be at the end of the trail. I would never have known I had a story to tell or a voice to tell it in if it hadn't been for that one crucial year and if my daughter hadn't been there to show me the way. What is this? This? It's a writing desk. This is very fine. Never have I seen such a desk. My husband made it. Oh. And you, Mrs. Wilder, what do you write in this book? Nothing in particular. The temperature, the look of the country as we're passing through, what I'm feeling. Things nobody but me would care about. You had ill fortune, Mr. Wilder said. There's no point in speaking of it. There is point. I want to hear. We lost our crops to a hailstorm. Lost our house to a fire. I buried a child. My husband got diphtheria and he can no longer do the work a man needs to do in hard country. So we had to leave our home. Home is a difficult place to leave. Yes, it is. These things nobody but you care about. Maybe someday you read them to your daughter. After you make your start in Missouri. than you are now. I had to leave my grandma and grandpa behind, too. He did? We were living in the big woods of Wisconsin. 
but it was getting too crowded for Pa. He wanted to try Kansas. So one day he loaded up the wagon, put your grandma, your Aunt Mary, and me in it, and we drove away across a frozen lake. Do you want to go? I was scared at first. Scared but excited. <laughs> I remember my mother did not want to go at all. She said to Pa, who would wish to leave home and wander forth in the world to meet its tempests and storms? You know what he said to her? What? I would. Why don't you go see if you can find us some berries? bit by a snake. See you? <laughs> Please don't let him die, mister. I can hardly stand to lose another one. You have any Luna Costi? No. Any spirits? I got a bottle of whiskey. Get it. <gasps> There's any red pepper in a cookbox? We'll need that too. if you would. He's my only boy. I'm a bit shaky. This may hurt a bit, son. All right. Yes, sir, I know it. Okay. <laughs> Be brave, son. Be brave, Charlie. Charlie, it's okay. Be still. Be still. It's all right. One more. It's all right. It's all right. Hush, hush now. Be still, Charlie, be still. Hold on. Go right there. Do you think he'll live? I hope he will. Swelling seems less. It's too much for the Lord to have. For us to lose him on top of the others. The others? His sister, Marianne, died of the whooping cough two years ago. And last summer, we lost the twins, James and Milam, to a flash flood. I'm sorry. I'm Beth. Laura. And what's your name, dear? Rose. Rose. Oh, that's a sweet name. I don't believe there is a sweeter name for a little girl than Rose. Yeah, I want to thank you for your help. You and your wife. Where are you folks headed? Missouri. Land of the big red apple. You? Missouri. To hell with Dakota is what I say. The hell with droughts and blizzards and the damn railroad that charges you more to take your crops to market than what they're worth. I'm tired of Dakota. I'm tired of bad luck. I'm tired of trying to make a living off wheat. Well, you're more than welcome to trail along with us if that would please you. Well, thank you. <laughs> it would indeed. Yeah, I believe I've got some of that whiskey left. Here's to Missouri. And the apples that fall right out of the tree into your basket. How many days till we're out in Dakota? I think we'll be at the Missouri River by day after tomorrow. It all looks the same no matter how far we go. It all looks the same. 
I don't know how you can say that, Rose. I saw a very interesting blade of grass about two miles ago. And here comes a handsome man on horseback. Whoa! Whoa! What's in the jug? Would you like to know? Be careful, spill it. Milk? Where'd you get it? I'm a farmer over there a ways. I traded him a fire mat for it. Never seen a man want a fire mat so bad in all my life. Now, if we just get us a little bacon. Day to you. Where you folks coming from? Missouri. Where are you bound? Back to Dakota. You mind if I ask why you're back trailing? Because Missouri's a world of rock with naught but an inch of soil on top. You'll have nothing to eat but whole cake and clabber. And that's if you're lucky. And after you've killed yourself trying to make the land pay, You'll have a hard time finding enough dirt to even bury yourself in. A year from now, you'll be back trailing too. Mama, he doesn't like Missouri. Say we try for another five miles before we camp. Well, we best be on our way then. Every destination is uncertain. Every journey a risk, every footstep a test of faith. that were traveling the unknown road that year. Times were bad everywhere. The promises of the past were broken, and there was nothing to trust in but the beckoning future. You ready? You ready, Rose? Huh? All right. <laughs> yeah, get on this, huh?
Bessie, you ready? Monroe's. Charlie, I'm cross. to wander forth in the world and meet its tempests and storms. Those were the simple, abiding words of my mother. What you looking at, Mama? It's our last sight of Dakota, Rose. I'm all right. But even as the home of my youth vanished beyond recovery, I seemed to hear my father's voice, not calling me back, but urging me forward forward beyond the rim of the world. Just the ripe ones, Rose. There's plenty enough for us to be picky. When Pa took us to Kansas, we didn't have any roads. The only roads we had were wagon tracks. I remember thinking how mysterious they were. Just leading on and on across the prairie. And then one day, he just pulled away from the tracks. Drove off without anything there to guide him. Let's take a look, Caroline. Paul, why are we stopping? country back then, as wild as you could want. And it wasn't long after we got the house built that a group of Indians decided to pay a call on... Get away! Get back! Get away from us! Go on, get out of here! He's scared. He's just lonely, Mama. Well, the poor thing's half-starved. We could feed him. Please? All right, Rose. But you cannot touch him until after I've washed him. Do you understand? I understand. Well, all right. Come along, unless you've got someplace better to go. Charlie, you take these drippings to your mother for me, please? Yes, ma'am. And tell her I want the three of you to come back here and help us eat this cobbler. The dog been ill-treated. 
I know he has. I'll leak a turn on her. I don't think he would, Manly. He doesn't have any meanness in him. Anyone can see that. She saw it right away. I don't have it in my heart to take that dog away from her. You can do it yourself if you care to. No, I guess I don't. Go get me some water if you'd like some coffee with your copper. Got a name I already picked out for him. You do? What is it? Fido. It means faithful. You like it? I reckon I do. Fido? Well, that ain't his name at all. We always used to call him Weezer because that wheezing sound he made when he was a pup. Hey there, Weezer! Mama? Come over by me, Rose. Come over here. What do you want? Oh, we just come for our dog is all. He got away from us. What might your name be? Mrs. Almanzo Wilder. Is there a Mr. Almanzo Wilder around here somewhere? There is. Yeah, well, if I was in his place with such a comely wife to my account, I wouldn't stray too far, neither. Where are you folks bound? East. Missouri, I reckon. Well, you're certainly well provisioned for the trip, Ms. Wilder. You got a lot of fine goods in here, quality goods. See there, we should have spent more care putting our outfit together, Arthur, like the Wilders here. You know, we should have made more of a plan. I don't care to make plans. Well, I know, but a little forethought don't hurt every now and then. Like, maybe if you'd remember to tie a Weezer up this morning, he wouldn't run off. Hey there, Weezer! What can I help you men with? Well, if we just come to get our dog here, and we'll leave you folks alone. Looks like you're about to have yourself a fine supper. Arthur, give me a hand here catching Weezer. No. Rose? Look, we'd like to buy that dog from you. Little girl taking a liking to Weezer, has she? Man? <laughs> well, he ain't a fit dog for a girl. Uh, he's skittish and untrustworthy, and he needs a strong hand. I'll give you two dollars for him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't do it. Look, that dog's no use to you that I can see. Well, that ain't for you to judge, mister. I'll give you 250. I said that ain't for you to judge, mister, and I don't care to have you and your wife sitting here staring at us like we ain't even fit to own a dog. You got no right to judge us. You got no right at all. But don't get too excited over that unless you won't get blown in two. I'm as calm as can be, mister. Don't take him. Don't take him, please. Bessie. Stop. Bessie. Sell us the dog. <laughs> you don't got good ears to hear, do you? I just told your husband no. Well, I'm asking now. You were right about what you said earlier. Wasn't fair of us to judge you like we did. I can tell that you have some feeling in you. What was that effect? You hear that, Arthur? The lady says we ain't cold-hearted after all. Please. Keep the damn dog and to hell with you. To hell with all of you! Fine. Where's that little revolver? 
In the cookbox. Well, it might be a good idea to keep it near you from now on, just in case. I thought you were a fierce one, Bessie. something I want to show you. Do you know what this is? It's money. It's a hundred dollar bill. This is the money we're going to use to buy our farm in Missouri. If anything should happen to your father or me, this money will be right here in the desk and it'll be yours. You understand? All right. Why don't you go get Fido? We have a long drive ahead of us today. It's beautiful country. Well, it ought to be. We've come 650 miles to see it. We're gonna have a house like that someday, Rose. But where will I go to school? Mansfield? It's up ahead a few miles. I expect we'll be happy here. Taking a long journey is like writing a book. One plodding step after the next. One more word set down on one more tablet sheet. You grow so used to the slow procession that you forget that it's leading somewhere and are astonished when it comes to an end. It'll be hard work, that's for sure. But we got 400 young apple trees all healed in, all ready to set out once the land is cleared. And it's only a mile and a half to town so Rose can walk to school. $300. 12% is what the bank is asking, pounded every three months. Of course, we, uh, we got the hunter to put down. I think it's a pretty fair price for a 40 like this. <sighs> this is how Pa must have felt. Standing on a new piece of land with nothing in sight but the future. So you like it then? I like it. <laughs> this is it. This is where we stop. Now I figured we could make out a right song of firewood at first, maybe even do pretty well once apple trees start bearing. Now if you want to look around a bit more, we can, but if you... some business to conduct in Mansfield. When do I get to see the farm? Very soon. You'll stay with the Magnusons, and as soon as we've signed all the papers at the bank, we'll come back as fast as we can and take you to our new home. All right? I can't wait. <laughs> just be patient, dear. We've traveled all this way. Certainly you can wait just a few more hours. Now, one last thing. Nice as you folks look, I wouldn't be surprised if the banker asked you for a loan. You look elegant, Laura. Thank you, Beth. Well, we best be on our way. Bessie, 
Why don't you make a withdraw from our account there? <laughs> if you want, I can go scouting with you, Mark. Land agent told me about a couple of good 40s not that far from our place. Says one's all cleared and already in the grass. Well, if it's already cleared, I reckon they'll want 400 if they want a nickel, but it won't hurt to look. Manly. Good luck to you. Thank you. Manly, the money's not here. What? The hundred dollar bill, it's, it's not here. Get excited, Bessie. It's got to be here. The little tray. We always kept it in the little I tray. Well, we kept it, Bessie. Now just keep calling now. Those men. Those men came back and they took it. No, they didn't. I stood guard that whole night. Kept your dinner warm. I believe I'm too tired to eat right away, Bessie. Is there any coffee? Mm. What are you writing? Letter to my parents. About our trip, mostly. You gonna tell them about it? Good. I don't want your pa thinking I can't provide for my family. You'd never think that. I saw George Magnuson today. Said he got a job in town running a hotel. Pays not much, he says, but at least he won't be living out in the back of their wagon. How's she doing? Disappointed. We were standing there looking out at the farm. I was so happy, Manly. I was thinking that when we laid down together the other day that... What? Well, maybe that a baby would come from it. I was thinking that that would be a fine thing. To make a baby. While we're so full of happiness and hope. I miss the wind. I miss the wind howling across the prairies back home. Trees make everything so silent. What are we gonna do, Manly? The wages you're making are barely enough to keep us alive, let alone buy us a piece of land. And what about when winter comes? We're gonna work. And we're gonna keep working until we work our way out of this thing. I promise you that. I promise you. Read me that letter you wrote to your folks. Go and read it to me. Money 
it's here. You found it? I found it. <laughs> you found it? You found it! You found it! <laughs> <laughs> I'll get to work clearing this brush while you women hit this house that you live in. And the three of us, oh, that means you too, young lady. We'll have to get to work clearing this ridge for the orchard. <clears throat> okay, Rose, will you go get that broom? We've got a lot of housekeeping to do. I think we can do this. A bit of luck comes our way every now and then if we can keep our health. This is what I've always wanted, Bessie. <laughs> I know. gonna live oh you'll be surprised how nice it'll look once we get it cleaned up come over here yes this will do just fine it's not big but i like a nice small cozy house now when we lived in wisconsin oh, stay away from us stay away rose go get your father no 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 Papa, Papa. Don't move. Don't touch me or I will kill you. I didn't mean. Bessie! 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 Bessie, what happened? What happened? I don't know. Uh, Amanda. Uh, Where are you? No. It's all right. It's all right. Probably just somebody down is lucky in the place to stay, so. You all right, Rose? Huh? Mama almost shot that man. Well, I guess he knows she means business then. You got a real time for a mother there, Rose. It's okay. Let's let's go back in here. Come on. long hours of solitude and idle thought. But I know the value of ordinary life as well. A life in which the task at hand is plain and hard and unchanging. It was the sort of rooted life that I learned from my father to tolerate, but learned from my mother to cherish. A life that is full not because of the places you've been or the miles you have traveled, but because you have stayed where you are, have coaxed something of value from the unforgiving earth, and have passed each day in harmony with those you love. The dog blanked at the cat, Sarah. Bart? Excellent. Margaret, the horse blanked the wagon. Pulled. Also excellent. Rose, the mockingbird blanked in the tree. Lingered. What did you say? The mockingbird lingered in the tree. <laughs> Children, please. Lingered. Very interesting choice of word, Rose. Very interesting. Jeremy, uh, snow blanked from the sky. Fell. Rose, dear, get up. It's time to go to school. I don't want to go to school. Why? What's wrong? They were mean to me. They laughed at me. Who? Oh. Those girls. Well, I bet they were just upset because you were the prettiest girl in that whole school. Manly. I'm all right. 
Because my feet just must have gone to sleep on me. Give me a, give me a hand in this chair right here, girls. Oh. Uh, What's wrong with you, Papa? Don't you worry, Rose. I'm fine. All right? You just get ready and go to school. I don't want to go to school. I want to stay here with you. Rose, please, just get dressed. You know you have to go to school. I'll be all right. It's just this cold weather. I just need a, a minute to get the blood back in my feet, that's all. It's okay. Don't worry about your father, Rose. He's going to be just fine. And you're going to have a better day at school today. I know it. But why do I have to go? Because if something is worthwhile, you don't just give up on it because it scares you at first. I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you to give up. It's a poor way to live your life. Okay. Go on. This land has to be cleared and those trees planted before the first freeze. That's the only chance we have of making it here, Bessie. I know, but you need to rest. If you don't rest, you might not be able to walk again at all. I can't stand being useless. I, mean, I can, I can stand being sick. I just, I just hate being useless. Maybe... What? Maybe before we get in any deeper here, we ought to... We ought to consider things. Consider what things? I'm just not strong anymore, Bessie. Yeah, you know, sometimes I can trick myself into thinking that I am, and I'm the same as I was before I got sick, but I'm, I'm not, and I know it. I don't know that I can take care of you and Rose here, Bessie. But maybe back home, maybe with your family's help, I can get a... Back trailing? Having this farm. It was always my dream, not yours. And I made it my dream. So that we could share it. And now you just want to give up on it? I don't like the thought of it any more than you do. Well, then stop thinking it. Just stop thinking it. I just got through telling Rose that she needed to face down her fear and go back to school. Now, how is it going to look to her when she comes back here and we tell her that we're quitting? The people who prosper are the people who stay, Manly. Ma always said it and she was right about it. Exactly. I can't pay cash, but if someone would want to help cut down some trees, he'd be able to take away all the firewood he could carry. Uh, would you know somebody who would be interested? Would you? Well, they keep me pretty busy here at the store, ma'am, and 
I don't know of anybody who'd want to work for firewood. Not when the railroad's hiring. Thank you anyway. You're welcome, ma'am. Hey, good luck to you. Poor man works all day as it is, and then he has to sleep on a cot behind the desk in case somebody shows up in the middle of the night needing a room. I don't see how I could even ask him, Laura. What about Charlie after school? Charlie's here after school, working beside us. The three of us have to keep this whole place running all by ourselves. There may be trees full of apples here, Laura, and there may be people walking down the street in fancy clothes, but it's just as hard in Missouri as it ever was in Dakota. I don't like not being able to help you, Laura. After all you and Almanzo have done for us, I don't like it at all. It's all right, Beth. I know you would help if you could. Laura? You're going away, aren't you? George wants to give Florida a try. He doesn't think we'll make it here. The three of us working at the hotel day and night and not a penny ahead. Not a penny. When are you going? At the end of the month. That soon? It has to be soon, Laura. Before it gets too cold to travel. Then God keep you, up. You and your family. I was just... I didn't know this was your property. I didn't know it was anybody's. You planning to shoot me? No. That's good. I, I wasn't planning to shoot you before. It just frightened me. Well, I'm frightened. That's a fact. My name is Mrs. Almanzo Wilder. Cornelius Laudermilk. Are you interested in work, Mr. Laudermilk? Work don't interest me in itself. Getting paid for it sometimes does. I have some trees that need to be chopped down and some others to be planted. I, I could give you all the firewood that you can haul away to sell and you could use our wagon. I'd feed you three meals a day. Apple trees? Who's on the other end of the saw? I am. I'll consider it.
surprise in here for you. What is it? Well, it could be an apple or a saucer pie or a carrot. But you'll just have to wait till lunch to find out. Bye, Papa. Bye, bye, Rosie. out here like some sort of timber wolf. I reckon we can start with this one. It is a writer's business to notice things. But there have been times in my life when I seem to notice nothing at all. Times when every moment is claimed by the urgent business of survival. When weariness kept me from seeing a broken heart. And when fear kept me from recognizing a shattered soul. Go get lunch. Good spot for an orchard. Nice high slope where the frost won't sell. Yeah, you're facing south too. Makes for good color in your apples. You've done this before? Had a farm once. I can see you looking at me while we're sawing through these trees. I can see you trying to guess what it is happened to this fellow's face. I'm sorry. The farm was over in Henderson County. Good soil for the most part. 60 bushels of oats the acre and 30 a wheat. One night we had a fire in the house and burned down on us. It's a hard lot, Mr. Laudermilk. No harder than anybody else's, I suspect. Anyway, I told you all about it now, and there's no need to speak of it. Better start seeing of these stumps. Got a world of trees to plant. Come on, pull them up! Come on! Come, Come on! on. Take them back, take them back, pull them back! Oh, God. Take them to the right! Come, Come on. on! There you go, it's coming! Come on, boys. There you go, it's coming! Come on! There you go, let's go, yeah! What is that? What? On your bread. It's not butter. 
What is it? I don't know. You do too. It's bacon grease. Covered wagon people can't afford butter, so they eat bacon grease on their bread. That's not true. <laughs> That's terrible. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Attention to them, Rose. They don't like cover wagon people here. As well as over there, they made fun of me too. But that I showed them this, and they like me just fine. The no snake ever bit me. Well, I'm your friend. Even if those girls ain't. The thing is, I don't know how long I'm gonna be around here. What do you mean? What happened to her? Lost her in the fire. Her and her mother. She had a secret hiding place in the barn where she used to go read that book to herself. That's how come it didn't get burned up. much for books myself. It was always peaceful of me watching her read. I could almost see the pictures the book was making in her head. slides on, whether it's noticed or not, and gradually the very things you could not see become the things you could not forget, and the long silent moments become the story you are meant to tell. Dig a hole or two. Thank 
to reform, Bessie. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. We still have a lot more saving to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Laudermilk, I want to thank you. I want to thank you, too. you children. Is there no kindness in you at all? Let's go. We're going home. Rose, I want you to take those girls out of your mind. They're not worth thinking about. They're certainly not the sort of person who deserves to be your friend. Don't be ashamed of what you are, Rose. You traveled all the way from South Dakota to Missouri in a covered wagon. You're helping your father and me build a farm from nothing. No amount of fancy airs or fancy clothes can measure up to that. Come with me. I want to show you something special. What is it? It's a letter that I sent home to your grandpa and grandma about our travels. published it in the paper. See? There's your name. You mean something you wrote is in the newspaper? I guess that makes me an author. <laughs> it's funny. I never thought of an author as a person before. Certainly not a person like me. I wonder what it would be like to see your name on a book. Maybe someday those children back at that school will be in a library and they'll pull down a book and it will say, by Miss Rose Wilder. They won't be throwing snowballs then. Never heard of Fisbuco. Is that something Professor K taught you in school? No, I made it up. Who do you speak it with? The other girls at school? No, just when I'm by myself and with Fido. Fisbuco. She invented the whole thing, an entire private language, all her own. There's no doubt she's an extraordinary child. Yeah, please. We were reading the Snowbird song. Do you know it, Mrs. Wilder? Uh, it's a perfectly monotonous little poem in the third reader. And I asked Rose to transpose a line or two. Tell us what the poem meant in plain speech. You know what she said? She said she wouldn't do it. She wouldn't? No, oh, it was not a matter of defiance, Mrs. Wilder. It was a matter, a principle. There was no point in telling what the poem meant. She insisted because the meaning of a poem exists only in the words of the poem itself. <laughs> yes, quite an extraordinary girl. She's very unhappy. Yes. Rose 
is a girl of rare intelligence and rare feeling. These are wonderful gifts, Mrs. Wilder, but they are dangerous gifts as well. They can drive a child inward, perhaps too far inward. Rose, darling, I don't want you speaking this language anymore. Why? Because it's not good for you. You need to speak a language that everyone else speaks. You cannot build your own private world. Do you hear me, Rose? I don't want you to speak this Fispuko again. Do you understand? Not even to Fido. Rose, not even to yourself. Now promise me. I hate it here. I hate it in Missouri. Rose, you said we were going to be happy here. You will be. No, we won't. Not me. I, I won't ever be happy here. I want to go back to Dakota. I want to go back to Grandma and Grandpa. Will you take us back? Will you take us back home? Rose, this is our home now. No, it's not. No, it's not our home. Maybe she went into town. Why would she go into town? Well, I don't know, Bessie, but she had to go somewhere. I'll saddle the horse and ride along the road.
great fighter will find us. Mama! Papa! <laughs> Do you want me to tell you the story my mama told me? It's about when she was a little girl. Once, when she lived in Plum Creek, she saw a big dark cloud in the sky. Only it wasn't a cloud. It was grasshoppers. Millions and millions of grasshoppers. Mama was afraid sometimes when she was a little girl. She was afraid of the dark, of the wolves at night. But Grandpa would take down his fiddle and play. And she wouldn't be scared anymore. husband on the road. I said little Rose was lost. She's in this cave somewhere. I, I heard the dog, but I, I don't know where she is. I can't hear her. Right, right, calm down, Miss Wilder. Don't be breathing so fast. The air is fouling here. Rose! I believe we came from this way, yonder. Come on. Wake up. Wake up. She needs air. Come on. Come on, babe. Come on. Come on, Fido. Wake up, Norman. Rose. Manly. Rose, wake up. Rose. 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 Rosie, wake up. Rose, it's all right. It's all right. Pretty slowly. You're home now.
fine. It's a present for you, Rose. It's for Mr. Buttermilk. Tend to beat the fruit worms of those apples. <laughs> Come with me. There's something I want to show you. The other morning I was standing out here just before it got light. The shadows from the trees over there started to come toward me. And it was as if the earth was moving under my feet, rolling into the sunlight. This would be a nice place for a house, don't you think? We're gonna build a house? Well, not right away, but someday, when the trees are bearing and the farm starts to pay. A house with a nice big porch to the north, so it'll be cool on a hot summer day. And we'll have a well, just outside the door, with a pump. No more lugging water from the creek. And in the parlor, we'll have a bookcase. No, two bookcases full of books and a hanging lamp to read them by. It'll have to be white, of course. A beautiful white house. We don't plan for me to be the one to paint it. <laughs> Wouldn't hurt you to take your nose out of a book every now and then, Rose? I know. What's got into you? Read what Mr. Ferris wrote about my essay. Congratulations. You have a discerning eye and a way of expressing yourself that is magical. Magical. Oh, Rose, I am so proud of you. I'm going to be a writer, Mama. That's a fine ambition. But don't forget, you're going to be a house painter first. I'm serious. All right. Remember when I was a little girl and you showed me that article you had written in the newspaper? The one Grandpa sent you from Dakota. I remember. You called yourself an author. And you sounded so proud when you said it. I've forgotten about that a long time ago, Rose. I didn't forget. Things wrong. Mary, she's more than anything else, my books have been about home. About a dream of home that all of us share. A dream in which loss and pain belong to the past. Mom to a different and distant place. In our dream, we know that home is where sorrow can never reach us. And then we wake. Alonzo, get your house built. How about them apple trees? They still bearing all right? 
They're barren fine. Well, I'm glad of it. We got four weeping women in this house. I don't need another one. What do you need, Pa? What do you want me to do? Well, to tell you the truth, Half Pint, I've sort of been waiting for someone to come along and offer to take me out for a drive. what it's like out here living in town you forget how quiet it is mm-hmm you and Almanzo gonna stay put in Missouri guess so well that's good I'm proud of you I'm proud of what you made of that farm I always thought I'd live more like you, Pa. Wander, see the Pacific. Well, you know, I thought I would, too. Well, maybe I'll see it on the other side. Maybe it won't be all angels and dominions, but just new country everywhere you look. No roads, no railroad tracks going through it, no towns. And at the end of it, that, that big old Pacific Ocean, just as blue as your mother's eyes. That'd be heaven to me. That would be the sweet by and by. to die, Pa. Well, there's not much I can do about it with this old heart in the shape it's in. <laughs> oh, it ain't so bad. I never was one to mind moving on to a new place. I remember once in Kansas when Mary and I were little. You took us to that old Indian camp. There were beads scattered all around the ground. We looked all day long for those beads. When it was time to go, you put me up on your shoulders and carried me home. Mm -hmm. I'm glad for that day. Riding on your shoulders, holding those beautiful beads in my hands, and watching all those meadow larks just fly out ahead of us. I'm glad for all those days like that, Pa, that you gave me. Oh, the way Dakota's filling up, <laughs> all this prairie's gonna be plowed under in no time at all. It don't seem possible, does it? Nope. The pioneering days are over. Budget. In a few years' time, it'll all be forgotten. Don't you forget about it. Don't you let Rose forget about it. I won't, Pa. Uh...
things don't happen all at once in life. It would still be many years before I had the courage to begin to think of myself as a writer. Rose became a writer long before I did. She wandered all over the world and collected many stories to tell. But the stories that mattered to her the most were the old ones. The stories she had heard from me about the days before she was born. Those hard and beautiful times before the cities were built and the prairies all plowed under. She would not let me forget, and because of her, I wrote them down and found a part of myself that had always seemed to be out of reach. All this happened far beyond the prairie, in the home we built on Rocky Ridge.